Yeah. Come on, let's all stand up and praise the Lord. Get excited for what the Lord has done for you. Be grateful, amen. Be thankful. Janine, be thankful. Hallelujah. Glory to God who always, I said always causes us to triumph. He always causes you to have victory. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you guys for being here in our mid-service. We went up a, a day here. It's Wednesday. I know that, right? Uh, uh, but it's going to be all right, all right? We're just going to... Uh, uh, we're going to talk about gratefulness and thankfulness. Amen. You know, we need, we, need, we need to have that kind of heart to be grateful and, and thankful, right, for what the Lord has done, what he brought you through. Who remember the beginning of the year? Remember the four months into it or six months into it? Oh, my God. But you made it. Ain't that, that's awesome, huh? It's really good. I know I'm, I'm totally, totally grateful, you know, for what the Lord has done for me in me, you know, and uh, it just, uh, it's a beautiful thing, man, when you get to know the Lord and know him personally, huh, you know, we, we'll fall down, but we get right back up, and we're bouncing, we're like, yep, that was a good one, you know, I used to be a fighter, I remember I used to love to fight, and uh, after a fight, you know, I would tell my, the guys that I was hanging out with, I was like, that dude can hit hard, man. That was a good fight. I said, that brother was dropping some hammers, boy. <laughs> but you were all uh, excited back in those days. You know, I was in my 20s, my early 20s. No more. Peace, love. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Peace and love. So uh, welcome uh, YouTube. Welcome Facebook. Welcome to our midweek service, our Thanksgiving service. Amen. I know everyone's excited. Gonna have some uh, pavo. We're gonna have some pavo. We're gonna have some. You know what pavo is in Spanish? Pavo means turkey. You know pavo. All right. Did you guys know that? Did you know that? Yeah. Did you know that? I looked at Rhonda. She was like, Ray. Did you know what you know what pavo meant? <laughs> She rose her eyes like, no, she didn't. <laughs> no, we're just having fun. Right on, praise God. Yeah, we're going to have a little bubble tomorrow, some ham, right? All the fixes and things like that. Then eat one time, right, Art? And then probably eat twice in the little afternoon time, evening time. Yeah, I know I will. I know I will. I know I'll eat, I'll eat early, about 2 o'clock. And then I'll eat again about 5, 6 o'clock again, you know, right? It's all right. It's, it's all right. Don't beat it up. That's your deal. You can do that. Amen. So uh, we're going to have our let's, uh, our let's Give Thanksgiving together, uh, uh, friend, Friendsgiving. That'll be uh, tomorrow at 5 o'clock. But if you want to get here earlier and you want to warm something up, we have ovens and things like that of that nature. Uh, want to uh, bake up a, a a pie early in the morning, you want to drop it in there. I don't know how early the people will be here. Uh, 11 o'clock in the morning, okay? So uh, about 11, 30, 12, you know, because uh, they're Mexican, so. <laughs> 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 no. So about, about 11 o'clock, he said he'll be there, amen? So, uh, <laughs> so uh, 11 o'clock, so come on out. The football games are going to be on three. There are football games. If you guys just want to come by, if you don't, you know, plan to stay, you can just come by and do a drive-by, get a piece of pie, a cup of coffee, some chocolate or something like that. And Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, just, yeah, take a picture that I can know you guys were there. Amen. Because if you tell me you're there, I didn't see you. I didn't see you. Okay. Then we, yeah. <laughs> then we have our uh, Christmas uh, uh, tree de decoration there, guys. Come on. That's on the 30th. Everyone's welcome, right, man? Everyone's welcome. So come on out. You may not want to de decorate, but, you know, you can hang out, you know, things like that. Be inside. They're going to be putting some Christmas music on, you know, get you in that little spirit of Christ. Amen? Amen. Of Christ, I said. Amen. Hallelujah. So praise God. So uh, then on the first, we're going to have yeah. our favorites right there. Yeah. Amen. 
That's this Sunday. Yep, exactly. Amen. So uh, that's going to be good. Some good soups and things like that. That's when the pozoles come out and uh, all that kind of stuff. So uh, whatever else is going to be made. So men of a higher standard, Saturday coming up. Hallelujah. We just added some about 10 youth, so they should be here every Saturday now. Praise God. Once a month. Once a month. Right, Landon? You're excited? Yeah. Praise God. Well, God is done. What God is done in these young men and the men. I can just see your faces. Things just changed in your life, you know. Things have happened, man. It was, it was good. It was good. Okay, our women's meeting on the 14th. Amen. They're excited. They're excited. Well, some are excited. Some aren't. You know what I mean? You'll get, you'll get excited as you go along, right? Amen. Yeah, better get excited. I'm going to have James pull your ears. Uh, uh, <laughs> get excited. Invite, invite somebody. That, that's how, you know, begins to grow with an invite. Power to invite, right? Invite somebody and never know. It may be their Saturday. They're like, I'm going, yeah? Very good. I like your hairdo right there, Mia. Very nice. A little different right there. Praise God. Right on. Uh, prayer every Tuesday, every Tuesday, amen? We got a good team. We got a good team, but we need other teammates, you know, so come on out. Be part of it. You know, if you can come once a, once a month, that's cool. If you come out every other month, that's cool. You know, just pray. When you pray, things happen. Amen. Things change when you pray, but you got to pray. You can't just give that little good night, Lord. <sighs> Fall asleep. Thank you, Father. You know, that's all good. But sometimes when you want some things from God, you got to go get in his face. Amen. Face to face. Every Sunday, we have our celebra uh, celebration Sunday. Come on. Amen. So we're going uh, uh, to be celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ every Sunday. We do it every day. And remember, we're going to do it every Sunday. So come on out again. Invite a friend. There, invite a friend. So uh, uh, right now, the king is coming. We're having our, uh, our once a year right there, Christmas uh, Service. There you go. Celebration, service. Amen. Are we going to have a skit? Okay. <laughs> he wasn't paying attention right now. <laughs> Just make, make sure that your wife's the, the lead, you know, and we'll be all good, right? <laughs> it's not going to be you. Somebody else going to lead? Eric's ready. Oh, your son, yeah. He's a character just like you, so yeah. Yeah, you're a character just like your dad. He's funny. He likes to have fun. He's a joker. You, you're a joker. <laughs> Hallelujah. So here comes my jokers right here. Praise God. Oh, Thomas. Come on, Thomas. Little Thomas Usher. Praise be to God. Right on. Good job. Let's open up in prayer. Uh, uh, I'm, like I said, I'm going to give a message on thankful, being thankful and grateful uh, to the Lord. So, Father, we bless you and we thank you with a grateful heart, a thankful heart, Lord, for all that you've done, Lord, all that you are doing and all that you're about to do by faith. We believe this, that you're about to do something brand new in our lives here this very moment, right now, right now, today. Father, we want to change our minds. We want to change our hearts. We want to change our habits, Lord God, toward you, toward you and toward our brothers and sisters in Christ. So we, excuse me, we thank you for the blessings upon us, Lord. We thank you that goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. And as we enter into this new year, Father, we still got a month and a half to go, but we're going we're gonna to enter that, that year, Lord, with fire, Lord God. <laughs> being exciting about what the Lord is doing, what he's already doing in our lives. We're excited, expecting a move of God on our children, on our wives, our husbands, our friends, our brothers in Christ, our sisters in Christ. Father, we're expecting a supernatural move of God upon us. So we're going to receive that right now by faith. We thank you for the healing upon us, Lord. From the top of our heads to the very soles of our feet, Father, we say that we're, 
were healed by the stripes of Christ, Lord. We're whole, we're well, we're healthy. We have a sound mind, Lord God, the mind of Christ. We have the great one living in us, the Holy Spirit living inside us to lead us, to guide us, to instruct us in the way that we should go. So I thank you for our obedience, Lord. I thank you for everyone here. I thank you for everyone on YouTube, everyone on Facebook right now, Lord. I thank you. This, this would be their year to come. To come and be part of us, Lord God, not just in spirit as they say, because I hear you guys say that, I'm there in spirit. Now it's time to be here in person. Amen. Amen. So we're, we're inviting you to come on out and be part of us. Come introduce yourself to us, you know, that we get to know each other even more and more, Lord. So we thank you. We bless you for our worship team, for our media team, for every uh, uh, ministering uh, team that we have, our ushers, our greeters, Lord our teachers, our nursery workers. Father, thank you for their lives, for their salvation. I pray right now in Jesus' name that they will not, they will not grow weary and doing well, Father, for in due season, they, Father, will uh, reap what they have sown, Lord. So I just thank you and I bless you right now in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. <laughs> Hallelujah.
Praise is unto you and only you, Father, for only you are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory of yours.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let everything that has breath praise your name, Father. Let everything that has breath praise your holy name, Father, Lord. Hallelujah. For this, Father. The season, Father, of gratitude and thankfulness, Father. Here we are, Lord. Here we are, Father, to sing praises unto you, Lord. For you have been so good to us, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. 
again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much But I'm nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing sound like Jasmine maybe but even if you don't you can still sing those sweet songs to him because that's what he wants to hear just you and him in communication you and him and just say hallelujah hallelujah Lord God we love you when we come before you with thanksgiving and praise we thank you Lord God for this time we thank you Lord for the opportunity to step into your presence Lord we thank you for what you're doing and what you've done, the restoration, the reconciliation, all these things that you're doing, Lord God. You work behind the scenes on our behalf. We thank you for it, Lord. You've turned things around. You continue to turn things around. And I thank you that you continue to work on my behalf and everybody's behalf here, Lord. Even when we don't see it, we know that you're still working. We thank you, Lord. I 
And if you can slowly make your way back to your seats. Thank you, Lord. can't say young married men. No. He's young, single, shoo, potential, good looking, good looking young men, soon to be young men in here. Huh. Yep. Oh. Thanksgiving Eve. So it's interesting that pastor has said he's going to talk on Thanksgiving and blessings because my Tithe verse tonight is Psalm 100 out of the New King James Version. And my Bible says it's called a Psalm of Thanksgiving. What is it? it says, make a joyful shout to the Lord. Hallelujah. All you lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with with what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Enter in his courts with praise right here. Be thankful to him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah is right. Enter in his courts with thanksgiving. That's all we can offer them. We can give them our tithes because that's what's required to give. We can give offerings because that's where blessings come from. That's how it works. That's how I read it. It says open, open, the, open the, your, tithe, your tithe opens the window, the blessing, the, your offering pours out blessings, okay? So that's how that goes. And I have so I was thinking, all I have is what I'm thankful for. I thought this year is the first year I don't have to work on Thanksgiving. <laughs> I don't have to work Christmases anymore either. Yep, all those are gone. I used to spend many a time away on holidays. Everybody means here, Bob can attest to that. Right now I have an opportunity to be with my kids, my grandkids. And I'm very thankful that I get that opportunity to sow into their lives and just be with them. So I'm not working this year. I miss a lot. But God, right? You ever heard about but God? One of my favorite things is but God. Everything looks this way and they go, but God. Right? So it's, uh, where was it? He said in Acts 13, 30, I didn't give you that one because I didn't know I was going to go that way. But I'm going to tell you, this is what it says. Acts 13, 30, if you want to see that. This is after Jesus had been dead, and it says, but God raised him from the dead. But God raised him from the dead. So, but God has renewed relationships with me and my wife even. It's a, we're on a whole nother, yeah, that's right. That's right. I mean, this is a new life, right? This is a new season we're doing, right? That is, it's not from cooking. Don't, don't think that. Right, right, right. She's still cooking. Right. But God. So, all I could encourage you guys is this weekend, uh, and every day, really, it should be, we should wake up with thanksgiving on our hearts and say, thank you, Father, for another day, another morning. But especially at this season, you can sit back and, and reflect. Don't look back, just reflect. Go back and see what God has taken us from. But God, but God, he turned us around, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know where you're going with that. But that's what we're going to do. So if you guys would need an envelope, these young, soon-to-be, well, they're all handsome right now, so 
We'll just go with that. If you need an envelope, raise your hand, and these young men will hand them out to you. That's right. Go right ahead. And then if you want to give electronically, we have the phone number to give. The phone number is 714-477-7736. One more time. 714-477-7736. Or you can scan the QR code up there like that. That's good. Yeah, drum roll. Or, uh, yep, and it'll take you to our Share Faith app. And please don't forget our Benevolence Fund, especially at this time of year. I know everybody, uh, yep, everybody, you should be thinking about how thankful we are, how blessed we are. Like Pastor says, we have, we're a rich family. We're rich families, we are, right? We have food, we throw away extra food, I know we do. We live well, praise God, the heat's on and things like that. Roofs over our head. I mean, there's plenty of people that don't have that. So be thankful this, this time. Think about it tomorrow while you're eating all that. I used to say, why do we, why do we cook so much? Why, I mean, we can't eat all of that. But they bring this dish and that dish and that dish and that dish. And it's like, well, that's what they did. Squanto did that, right? They, they learned how to be. Oh, I didn't go there either. All right, all right. Be thankful. Reflect on it. And talk about it at the dinner table tomorrow. You know, don't chew up somebody. Chew your food. Don't chew up pastor or somebody else, you know, or brothers and sisters. Right? All right. So this time at Turning Point, we do not take your offering. We receive them. So after you've prayed over them, come on up and drop them off in the buckets as the worship team takes over. So 
Yeah, if you'd reach your hands out <laughs> to these guys right here. Well, Heavenly Father, <laughs> I thank you for the next generation, Lord God, of mighty men that are being raised up in the house here right now, Lord God. I ask you to bless them and all the ones that they impact, Lord, because each one of them impact kids where they play and where they run around and everywhere they go, Lord, in the schools, everything they do. We ask you to bless them. Bless this tithe and offering. Use it for your kingdom, that souls will be saved and lives will be rearranged and changed and restored, Lord. We thank you for it, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the impact that we're having here in this community. And again, I ask you to bless the young men right here, Lord, as they go on about their day and uh, speak your word, Lord. And they act and behave knowing that you're right next to them and watching over them, Lord. Bless all of our children, protect them all as they go on about our day. And we pray, Lord, that we will reflect on you today, tomorrow, Lord, and every day, that it should be part of our normal daily thing, just to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. So thank you, and bless these tithes and offerings. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said? Amen. 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 Bring it down. Good job. Yeah, boys, you can take it down. Bring it to the seniors over there. <laughs> Whew. That's the next generation there. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> okay, at this time, we're going to release the... Okay, thank you. That's right, easy, easy. Uh, we re <laughs> release the children and the youth. are all going out tonight. Give them a big hand, everybody. Celebrate them all. Celebrate them. If you don't celebrate them, somebody else is going to celebrate them. That's right. There goes the next doctors, lawyers, electricians, plumbers, architects, harbor ship pilots, tugboat drivers, longshoremen. Yes. Now we... Hold on. Oh, okay. At this time, we can release the worship team. We thank you so much, worship team. Thank you for bringing us in. No, 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 too far. Back that way. A little bit back. Okay. There you go. We should put a tape mark down there. <laughs> He'll take it off. He's going to pull my ears. That's right. Reach up there. All right. All right. And get ready because the crowd's going to go wild because we're going to introduce our own Pastor Angel. Yeah. Woo! And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> you know, uh, when they used to introduce me, you know, say, oh, Pastor Angel coming up, and, you know, it was all quiet. And I would say it to myself. He would hear me. I'm like, and the crowd goes crazy. <laughs> it would be all silent. <laughs> well, praise God. You guys, uh, if you have your uh, Bibles in your hand, we're going to do our confession of faith. Jesus, please. Hallelujah. If you haven't put them in your right hand, put your berry, uh, berry white base on right there. Amen. For you men in Jesus' name. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, the indestructible, ever living seed of the word of God. I'll never be the same. I don't want to be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of our Father. You know, uh, as we meditate on the word of God, I, I want to say this to you guys. As you meditate upon the word of God, meditate means that you would mur uh, more, I say the word, what, what they say? Well, you just say it over and over. <laughs> no, not memorize. What the cows do, they chew on it. Uh, huh? Yeah, okay. We'll say that one. Oh, well, forget it. <laughs> they, they say it over and over. Yeah, they say it over and over. The, and the cows chew on the, 
the grass over and over and they drop it in their belly and they drink the juice of it and then they take it back up and they'll chew it again, they'll chew it again. They'll go everything they can to get out of that, uh, that grass where they can produce milk. And the same thing with us as we continue, thank you, sir, as we continue to uh, meditate upon the word, say the word to yourself. You don't have to say it all loud or nothing like that, but just say the word. Read the word to yourself. If you would do that, that word begins to produce. And it begins to produce the mind of Christ, the spirit of God. It begins to produce the, the goodness of God the mercy of God in, in your life. But you have to learn how to declare the word and say the word over and over and uh, memorize it. You, you have to know that. That way when things happen in your life, you have the word. You have the sword. You have the sword to take the enemy on and, and just defeat him in Jesus' name. It's all up to you to defeat him. He has no power. What he's going to try to do is just use lies. And the false imagination to get you out of your faith. But if you have the word and it's faith, you declare the word and say the word, the enemy has no power. He has no, uh, no authority over you. You, you got to know that. You got to declare that. And I want you guys to know that, that you can overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony, what you're saying. This is how you overcome, right? If you, you keep calling your, your, your co-worker a, a jerk or a loser, <clears throat> that's how you're going to see him, as a jerk and a loser. But if you begin to say he's a man of God, he's blessed of the Lord, highly favored of God, he's going to begin to walk in that. I'm a witness. I, I worked with a gentleman for like 15 years. We did the inside order, de uh, order desk when I, before they moved me outside. And him and I didn't get along. Old veterano from out there, uh, Venice Beach, you know, uh, 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 we didn't, we didn't see each other. I was a Christian, and I was blood bought and everything, washed and all that, and, but he could get on my nerve, man. He could get on my last nerve, and, uh, because I would say good morning, I was in the office with, uh, uh, Cugobos, how do you call it, C-U-B-I-L, yeah, that one right there, uh, I would be sharing that with six men in the, in the office, and I, you know, mine was at the end, my, my desk was at the end, and I would say, hey, good morning, Andy, good morning, Bobby, good morning, Connie, good morning, Ted, good morning, Eric, you know, and when he, his name was Oscar, you know, and I'd say, good morning, Oscar, and then one day he just says, what's all that good morning stuff, why do you got to say good morning to everybody, why can't you just say good morning for everybody, and that's it, I said, because that's who you are, and this is who I am, I said, you be who you be, and let me be who I am, brother. I said, I ain't saying that you're a grouch, brother. I said, I know you're a grouch, and I ain't tripping on you, you know. I said, you live your life. You know, Carnal, I would tell him because he, he knew what I was talking about. You know, I said, Carnal, you know what I'm talking about? And he's like, yeah, but we don't need all that. Then, you know, I had my Bible on, on my desk, you know, and I got there. I got to work. I started at 7. I would get there like at 6.40, 6.45. Give me a time to read my proverb. I read a proverb every day, you know, meditate upon it, grab my coffee, and I just sit there. And he was like, hey, this ain't no church. This ain't no church building you, reading your Bible right there, praying. What's all that about? I said, bro, I said, this is my life, my business. I go, mind your own business, brother. I said, if you don't want to read the Bible, you don't, you don't want to hear me. I said, I don't even talk to you about Jesus, carnalito. I go, I talk to the other brothers that are in the office. You know, I talk to them about Jesus. They'll have questions like, Angel, this Sunday, you know, what was your, what was your message about? And that night, boom, I'm like, yeah, that opens up a door. So now I get to share, you know, that, that's a good little uh, gold nugget for you guys. If you guys take notes, then when you go to work, they say, what'd you do this weekend? You, you don't have to say, oh, I went to go eat and, you know, we went to, I went to church. You went to church? Yeah. And you don't give them a, a, a way out. I went to church and my pastor talked about Thanksgiving and being grateful, brother. It was a trip. He said this, you know, he said this. And, you know, and you get to share a little bit with them and they're like, oh, my God. And so I would always do that with him. He was inside the office. He didn't want to hear it, but I would share. And then one day when they told me that he had cancer, you know, people told me, hey, uh, Oscar has ca cancer, brother. You know what I'm saying? All right? They go, you're going to go talk to him and pray with him. 
you know, I, you know one, one brother goes, I don't know if he's saved. You know, I said, well, we'll talk to him, we'll talk to him. So I went upstairs. He's up there working by himself. And I say, hey, what's going on, little, you know, Carnal, what's going on? He says, no, nothing right here. What's happening, Ange? And, you know, I'd say nothing. So I'm acting like I'm stalking stuff, you know. And he says, oh, you're here to talk to me. He says, you're here to share the gospel with me, huh? I go, yeah. I go, you know. I said, I know. I said, I know you got locked up before in your life because he was older than me. He was probably, at that time, he was probably about six, eight years older than me, you know. And I go, uh, I said, I know you've been locked up, you know, and stuff like that. I said, because uh, you can just tell a guy that went to college, you know. And uh, he goes, uh, so I, I just talked to him a little bit. I said, hey, Oscar, have you ever received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? You know, he says, I've been to church before, brother, you know. He goes, inside and outside. He goes, you know, a lot of them are full of, <laughs> you know, he went like that, you know, because he cussed and all that. And I said, I said, but not all of them. I said, not, not, not all of us, you know. A lot of us, we, we preach the truth. We, you know, we preach in love, we preach in grace. But I'm going to tell you the, the truth. Like, I, you hear me talking to the guys. We, we, I talk in truth, bro. He goes, no, no, I know, I know. I said, all right, right on, you know. So I started walking away. He goes, what? I go, what? What's up? And he goes, what? I go, what? You're not going to preach to me? You're not going to try to get me saved? <laughs> I said, you don't want to hear me, carnal. I said, you don't want to hear me, so I'm just going to walk away. He goes, oh, like that. I said, like, my brother. And I walked away from him. I went downstairs. And then at lunchtime, he's just like, what were you going to tell me up there, you know? And I said, I was just tell you about Jesus, brother. I said, uh, I, I know that you're ill and all that, brother. I said, and they said it's, you know, you're going to, it's, what's it called? Like, terminal. yeah, terminal, yeah. And I said, uh, but Jesus is the way, brother. Even if you don't make it here, you can make it on the other side. You know, I said, because God forgives us. And I, you know, I just went through everything I went through with him. He's like, all right. And one day we're right there in Santa Fe Springs. And he lived about four blocks away from the church. He lived in the Whittier side instead of the Santa Fe Springs side. And he walked in and sat in the back row, like right there. And I'm preaching, and he goes, you know, because he, you know, he was old, big old brush, you know, back, black hair. And, and I said, like that. So then the next day at work, you know, he's like, Hey, hey, you do pretty good. He called me a storyteller. He says, you, he goes, you're a good storyteller, bro. He goes, you know, he goes, I was there for like 45 minutes. Like, you kept my attention, bro. He goes, I just sat there like, wow, this guy does pretty good. You know, and he was telling the guys on the, on the other the team, you know, like, Andrew does good. You guys got to go to his church, man. And brother, he may get you saved. <laughs> and a couple of them did come. There was like one, two, three, and then him four. Guys in uh, from the from my work, they they came and they sat, you know, and uh, I just I said all that to say this that you make an impact on somebody's life. Amen. Believe it or not, if you don't say nothing but you live in uh, you live in excellence, you live in integrity, they don't see you. They're grabbing, you know, because guys they're boys, they want to pinch your nipple, they want to grab your booty and stuff like that. That's how men are. I'm closing my eyes. I'm not looking at nobody here. They, they do stuff like that, you know, and uh, I, I didn't allow that stuff when, you know, I worked with all those men. I'm like, don't ever grab me like that, brother, because you're going to get socked. I'm a sock in your face. I go, I really am. Brother, I said, I, I, don't, I don't play like that. You guys go ahead and want to play that. You play that way. I, I don't do that. And so when they would do that, it's like, you can't play like that with Ainge, you know, the preacher. He ain't going to let you do it. And I'm not. You know, I'm not going to allow, allow that to do it. But when he, he passed away, they told me he, he had passed away. They called me and said, hey, Oscar uh, passed away. And so I said, oh, wow. I said, uh, it would have been cool if you guys would have let me know. I would have went. I would have went. And I said, you know. And uh, then his, his daughter called me like two weeks afterwards and said, Angel, uh, my father had you in his will. I said, me? I go, Angel. He says, yeah. Because I went to his house a couple of times on my bike, you know, and he had a, a man's cave in, the, in his garage, and, you know, he quit drinking and all that, but his friends were still drinking. They, get, they were Raider fans and San Diego fans. There were no Ram fans because I went there one time on a Monday night, you know. But they were, they were cool guys. They were cool guys. You know, I would have hung around with them if I was of the world. They, you know, that's who I would have hung around with. They were cool guys to be around for that, for the world, but not in Christ. And uh, he had gave me some eight, 
What are those? The quads? Yeah. He gave me like three of those. And I go, are you sure you have my name down? He goes, you're Angel Baruch, right? He goes, yeah, he told me about you a lot. He told me, uh, this guy's a preacher, you know. He's cool. He's cool people the way he, he talks to people, you know. I go, but I have no need for those. You know, I said, I, I don't go motorcycle, uh, you know, on the street. <laughs> yeah. I, go, I go, I don't go dirt bike riding or nothing like that, you know. I said, so. I go, you can give them away, just go ahead. And, I, you know, I guess they. Right? And you guys get to ride those? You know how to ride them? Oh, okay. You guys should have told me. No, <laughs> I did. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, it was a trip that you get to win somebody. And uh, that happened to me like three times. And I worked there for 19 years. So they all knew I was a preacher. They knew I ministered the word. And there was like three different people that I, I got to minister to like that. Two of them that died from cancer and one that, one he had that cancer that was, I had to wear a suit when I walked in with the breather and all that stuff. Uh, it was a, yeah, he, he got sick and in seven days he was dead when they told him he was sick. And he had called up my boss and told me, tell Angel to come get me saved. And, you know, my boss is a Christian. He goes, Angel can't save him. Can't save you. It's only Jesus Christ. He goes, you know what I'm talking about? He, I just wanted to come over here and get my talk to my wife and my kids. And we did. You know, we went, we got to pray with him. I gave him one of my, I had my, one of my favorite Bibles there. You guys have a favorite Bible? You know, I've given like two of the, my favorite Bibles like that. I gave it to him, you know, and I said, uh, oh, just read it while you're at night. You know, you know, he was a rock and roller guy. He played lead guitar in a band. He was all tatted up and everything, you know. And uh, I preached at his gospel. I, at his, uh, I preached the gospel at his funeral, you know. And he had a sister that was saved, but a religious spirit she had. And she was sitting in the front. When I was preaching, she was going like, because I said he was saved. I said he got to go to heaven, you know. I said I read him, I, uh, led him to the Lord. He asked for forgiveness of his sins. Receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and I believe in heaven. And his, I believe he's in heaven. His sister's like, and when it was all done, his sister came up to me. She says, "Do you think that's all it takes to go to heaven?" I said, "For sure." I go, "If you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, right, that Jesus Christ is Lord. He died on the cross, resurrected from the dead. The Bible says you'll be saved." I go, "If he confessed that out of himself, I go, he was desperate. He was desperate for Jesus." We're desperate for Jesus, too, and we don't know it, right? We need Jesus, right? We need Jesus. Or you'll never live a holy life or a right life before God. And you may have to call out at the last minute like the man did on the, on the cross, right? He didn't get baptized. He didn't get speaking tongues. He didn't tithe. He didn't offer. He didn't do none of that stuff, right? He just, remember me when you go into paradise, and what did the Lord say? Today, you will be with me. Yes, surely today you'll be with me in paradise. And that's how it works. We have to believe. And that's why I say that a lot of people think that you've got to earn your way to heaven. You don't. You live, your, you live your life, but make sure that God's the center of your life. You know, we'll blow, we'll miss it, but we don't try to practice that. Talking to all you guys out there too. You're not practicing sin. You, you'll sin here and there, right? But you're saved. You know you're saved, right, man? Amen. You got, you got to know that. If, if I ask you, you know, where are you going when you die, man? That's right. Yeah, he can't answer, he can't answer for you. <laughs> Amen, exactly. You got to know that in your heart. Where are you going home when you, when you pass away, when you go? That's right, Exactly. You got to know that in your heart. I'm going to heaven. Don't matter how, how we look, if you got all kinds of tattoos, if you don't. If you look a straight cat, a straight cat sins just as much as the other one, if not more. You know what I mean? We think that, oh, yeah, he's a straight cat. Yeah, right. Some of them guys are wicked, you know, serious. And 
I just said all that because that, God had dropped that in my heart about meditation. Then we have to meditate upon the word of God. The word of God has to be in us and be part of us of who we are, right? When you speak, there has to be a hallelujah. There has to be an amen in your life, in your vocabulary, in, in your lifestyle. They, they, they have to know your fruit. They'll know you by your fruit, right? And uh, that's, how, that's how we're known as Christians, by our fruit. They'll know you're a Christian. You know, they'll sense you. They can, wicked people, bad people, that, or people that don't believe, they can sense, you're a brother, huh? Yes, I'm a brother. You're a sister in Christ, huh? Yeah. Or they'll just call you brother or sister right off the top. Hey, brother. Hey, sister. They know. You know, the way you conduct yourself, the way you live, the way you speak, you're something different about you. I'm not saying perfect. Don't, don't get it all twisted. Not perfect. But they know you're a Christian. Amen. We're going fast here. Amen. So if you would go to Psalms 103, I did not give you the, uh, the things, mijo. You, if you can ask me that next time, because I'm going and going and going and going. They don't stop. Uh, 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 Psalms 103, 1-5. Amen. But I, I wanted to go to 100. But hold on, we're going to go there. Was it 100? Oh, no, here it is. I'm sorry, Mel. 103, Psalms 103, 1 through 5. 1 through 5. And I'm talking about being grateful and thankful right now. I got 15 minutes. You know, grateful is when you feel thankful for the good things in your life. I looked up the word good, uh, grateful, feeling or showing an appreciation for kindness and thankful. Being filled with a gratitude of welcome. I, I, I like this one right there. Enjoying the grateful shade of God's grace. That, that's good right there. Enjoying the grateful shade of God's grace. Just sitting under the grace. <laughs> yeah. I can't earn it. I can't buy it. I can't put enough money in that bucket to get my way to heaven. It's through grace that I'm saved. Amen. Not of our own doing, because if it was on your own doing, you're going to be bragging and boasting about it, about what you do and how you do it. Right. Yeah, we got to be grateful. Amen. So tell me amen when you're there. Amen. Psalms 103, 1 through 4, 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his name. His name is Jesus. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Don't forget what he's done for you. Some of you, I, I, I trip out. You, we, we argue, we fight, we get into something here at the church and this and that, and we leave God. We leave God. We think we're leaving each other and we're gone, and all of a sudden you're not even fellowshipping no more with God. You're no longer speaking the word. You're no longer walking in joy. You went back to your bitter self. You went back to your, your, your ugly face. You got, you know, got the boochy face back on. You start walking, strolling, and all that all over again. You know, you're back to your old self. We, we have to learn how to be grateful and thankful for what you have. God gave you forgiveness. God gave you health. Gave you guys a sound mind. God has comforted you in your times of trouble. Right? He comforted you. He gave you strength when you were weak, when you wanted to quit and run. He didn't allow you to. He get back up and you're like, oh, I want to, oh, my, oh my God. And he's like, come on. You, can, you have to imagine God like this. I do. I imagine this stuff. You know, my imagination is real good with God. And he grabs you underneath your arms and like, come on, stand up. Because you're like the, squir the, uh, scray uh, the, score the scarecrow. Thank you. Very good. Scarecrow. Yeah, he's like a scarecrow, right? He's falling all around and stuff like that because he has no bones or nothing. But God gives you up and he strengthens you. Like, come on, get up. Let's go. Walk with me. And if he has to hold your hand, he's going to hold your hand for a season. 
If he has to put his arm around you and hold you up like we used to do when people were drunk, right? We used to hold them all the way to the car and all that stuff, right? He, he will hold you up. Can I get an amen? Amen. And he takes you where he's got to take you to. He's the, the deliverer. He's delivered you. He has set you free. He's made you right in his sight. You may not look you. You're right looking in the mirror like nothing's changed. Your heart has changed. Even if it's little bit. It's changing. You got to be grateful for that little bit. You got to be thankful for the little bit. I talk about rice and beans all the time, right? You got to be grateful for some rice and beans. You got to go through that season bologna sandwiches. I ate those before. They're good. I still like them. You know, I know some of you guys are like, mm. but you know, but I couldn't wait when I. I remember when I got saved. I remember I could, when I could buy a steak. I couldn't buy a steak because I was in a whole different world. When I said, I'm going to buy a steak, watch. When I get right and get my mind right, I'm going to buy a steak. You know what I mean? I can order, I can buy a steak now. That's mind-blowing. That's the goodness of God. Because there's people out there that can't buy a, ste a steak. They can't go out to a restaurant. For you, it's second nature. Oh, we go to a restaurant anytime we want. But for some people, it's not. It's a struggle. Can I get an Amen. But God is so good. Let me go on, man. Because I love the Lord. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Who forgives you all your iniquities. Iniquities is, is the sin that's within you. That you don't even tell people about the inside sin. You know how to hide that arruga. How you doing? I'm blessed. And you just lied 30 seconds ago, two minutes ago. You just checked out that dude and all that stuff. You know, how you doing? I'm doing great, pastor, you know, things like that. Uh, these are the iniquities of a man that's hidden. But God knows everything. <laughs> Amen. There's not a sin that God doesn't know about. He, he, that's why it says no man will go before him with any excuse. No excuse is going to be done before God for that judgment seat. You came, but, you came in butt naked, he's going to see you butt naked, and he's going to see everything. And if you lie, he said, let's put up the video. Put it up, let's fly it. And you begin to see when you're born all the way through. And, uh, right here. You say you never lied. Here it is, your first lie. Uh, right there, another one. You know, and he starts going through all that stuff. But God is so good, so let's not forget his benefits, right? He says, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals you, heals all your diseases. Amen? Amen? Amen. We got to learn how to walk in that. In the goodness of God, the healing of God. Amen. Who redeems your life from destruction. <laughs> some, some of you want to blame the devil. Oh, the devil, the, the devil ain't doing nothing. He ain't got no power to do it. You take the, you take the bite, the bit, the B-A-I-T, bait, thank you. You take the bait and you bite it and you get caught. And now he's got you because you took the bit, the bait. It's only temptation. That's all it is. You got to know the knowledge. It's just a temptation. It's not, it's not the real thing. I'm not going to take that bait. I'm telling you no right now. And you have the authority to say that to the enemy. But that's done when you're grateful and thankful. When you're grateful and thankful for your life, you have the power and the authority. God uses humility contrast to the pride of a man. Amen? He, he, he uses that to better us and uh, uh, to help us. I, I got my heart broken earlier this week by God, not by a man, by God, because he was talking to me, and I was talking to him, and when I got in my car, my car, and then when I got in my, my bedroom, my bedroom is my secret place. That's my quiet place, and there ain't no hiding right there, brother, because the Spirit of God lives in my room. I, I, I know he's there. As soon as I walk in, I can just sense the, the Spirit of God, and, and God just broke my heart right in half. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I thought about it for one day, two days, 
three days. The Lord said, how long are we going to think about this stuff? And I had to forgive. And I, I had to forgive myself for my actions, my life. We want to blame everybody else, their actions. It's not their actions. It's you. I'm pointing at myself. It's you, Angel Baruch, you, Uncle. You know better and you chose not to do what was right. For a man to know to do right and chooses to do wrong, what is it? Sin. Sin. You missed the mark. That's what he's telling you. You missed the mark. I gave you an opportunity. And we didn't take that opportunity. We missed the mark. That doesn't mean it's over, it's done, it's failure. You know, no, no. You grow. You grow and he begins to, to minister to you. There's a song, if you can look it up on your phone, it's called Stay by someone McDowell. McDowell, McDowell. It's called, yeah, just on your phone, just before I can see it, because I want to play it at the end if you don't mind. It's called Stay, and it's by a guy, his last name is McDowell. He's a morenito, a brother. Is his, William's his first name? Okay. I, I've been hearing this song already for like about two months. Two months. And what you guys represent, what you guys uh, experienced Saturday night at the mountain was that song. Was that song. I've been, that song's been ministering to me. I walk around with the phone on it and just hit replay. About 10 times in my house. Go make a sandwich or go get some food and I'm listening to it. I'm in my car on the way over here. Boom. It's like a five-minute song. Real short song. That was short to me. You know, like, oh, wait, do you guys have it? He, okay, we'll do it at the end right now. You can, if you can play it over here, over this, if you guys know how to do that, I'm sure you do. I don't know how to do that stuff. That's why we have a good team. <laughs> you know, uh, you guys think I look good. They make me look good. These guys make me look good, not pastor. It says, who redeems his life from destruction? God redeems us. We were killing ourselves in disobedience. It wasn't the devil. It's our own actions, our sinful nature. And you guys think, oh, it's the flesh. You guys, oh, the flesh, the flesh. This is dirt. Dirt we were made and dirt we're going to come to. It's pura tierra. That's all it is, it's dirt. There's no power. The spirit leaves the man. What happens to this body? <laughs> Hits to the ground. It's dead. It's over. When the blood leaves that man, <laughs> there's life in the blood, right? And once that man, once that man leaves, once that blood leaves him, no more blood, no more life. He is dead. Amen? Amen? So it's the redeeming blood of Christ that has redeemed us from destruction. We're new people in Christ, and let's stop living like the old man and begin to live like the new man. And it's a challenge. It's a battle. Can I get an amen, Beatrice, right? It's a battle. Huh? It's a battle. It is to fight this flesh. But we can overcome once we learn the knowledge and get to believe what the Bible is saying. You got to live it. Can't be about this. We got to live it out in front of everybody. Amen. And, it, and it's, it gets tough. It gets tough. And, and if you don't listen, God will break your heart. That's how, that's how he gets you to move. Okay, you didn't want to listen, Terco Cabezón. I tried to talk to you, so we're going to do it my way now. Your way ain't working. So he begins to minister to you. And he's not being because he's ugly or mean. He does it because he loves us. It's just like I don't think none of us go beat up our kids or whip our kids because we're in a bad, foul mood. All right? You whip them because you're going to discipline them if they're small enough to be disciplined at that still, at that thing of area, their area of their life, right? But once they're like, I say 15, 16 years old, very rare you're going to pop them upside the back of their head, probably, you know, like. I was talking to you. I've done that before to a 15, 16-year-old kid. You know, but to whip him, I, I, you know, I think I whipped Lucas last when he was like 12 years old when I took the belt to him, you know. After that, I just began to speak to him. And you grow as a, as a Christian. You grow as a man, as a, 
as a father, as a husband, as a wife, right? As, as a mom, you begin to grow and you begin to use some wisdom now. Because you shine on your kid. If your kid really loves you, really adores you, shine him on when you're, when you're ticked off. You're going to break his heart. He's going to fall. What did I do? I'm sorry. Sorry. That'll hurt them more than a belt. Once they, once they fall in love with you and they respect you, it's going to happen like that for you guys. Just stay in the word. It says, who redeems our life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Goodness and the mercy of God follow you all the day. And, and as you live with God, imagine that. He puts a crown of loving kindness over you. Mercy upon you. Some of you should have been dead. Some of you should have been in the hospital. Thank you. Should have been in the hospital for a long time. I almost got hit on my bike. My bike throttled and it just died on me one time right there in the store. I'm, I'm on, uh, Magnolia, Magnolia and Orange stuff. And I'm going, I'm ready to take off. And I'm like, boom, boom, boom. Thank God it did. A guy running a, a red light about 60, 70 miles an hour. If two seconds earlier, I would bye. It was nice. But the mercy of God keeps us, follows us all the days of our life. If uh, we're talking about grateful and thankfulness, look back and just think about the goodness of God, of how good he's been with you, what he's done for you. Some of you were eating rice and beans because you had to. Some of you were eating bologna sandwiches because you had to. Now it's a choice. I yearn, Art, for beans and rice I do really. I mean but you know real Mexican rice and beans man. don't give me white rice with beans and stuff like that <laughs> you know I'm talking about the real good stuff amen you know what I'm talking about right man good stuff right there you could just make a, a bean taco right there a little chile and boom it's jamming baby right there amen I know some of you guys bean yes yes a bean taco yeah <laughs> right Rice and beans burritos. I don't buy them no more. You know, I used to have to eat those. I don't have to do that no more. Put a little pollo in there for me. <laughs> but here it says, it crowns you with uh, loving kindness and tender mercies who satisfies your mouth. You don't have to cuss. You don't have to lie. You don't have to blow it no more. He satisfies your mouth with what? Good things. That's right. Amen. You can build somebody up now. You can be nice to somebody. Imagine that, huh? Wow, we because we were nice people at one time. I know some of you thought you were nice, but then you met Christ and like, ooh, we no comparison whatsoever. I thought I was loving, uh, uh no comparison to him. He's the one that loves. He's the one that's kind. He has taught me how to control my mouth, but yet you still blow it here and there. Amen. You blow it. And we just have to learn how to grow. Okay, I'm going to learn to grow. He says, uh, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your mouth is renewed like the eagles. That's, that's what he wants to do for us. I know I'm done here, but I'm going to give you these little points. I got like four little points here. I'm going to just read them to you. Grateful, grateful is when you feel thankful for the good things in your life. Grateful is taking a moment to reflect. When you said that, I'm like, dang, I wrote that down today. Uh, reflect on how blessed you are, whether it's small or big. You got to know that you're blessed. That's why it's a good practice to say, how are you doing? I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. I'm healthy. I'm well. That's what you're saying when you say, I'm blessed. I'm wealthy, not with money, but I'm wealthy with joy and gladness. Because remember when you weren't glad. Remember when you weren't happy. Now you are. Smiles came in today and I'm like, yeah. That brother just smiling now all the time. I used to call him Smiles because he was just serious when he first came to our church. I said, I'm going to call you Brother Smiles. 
And he walked in there laughing and smiling. I said, prophecy came to pass in Jesus' name. Amen? And this is how we have to live. This is how we have to declare that. Being grateful is recognizing that we have not done everything for ourselves, but we did depend on others, especially God. We need to appreciate others for what they do for you too. That's being grateful. Don't just think it's all about you. Thank you, brother, for being here. Because if you wouldn't be here, then I wouldn't even be, I wouldn't be complete without you, my brother, my sister. You make me complete. Every time I see you here, you don't even know the blessings that you guys are. Got to be grateful to God. It says, lean not to your own understanding, but with all your heart, trust in the Lord, right? And he, he'll direct your steps, right? He directs your life. And that's what we have to do. Just allow God to direct your steps. You don't even know where you're going. I didn't know where I'm going. I was going. Even when I got saved, I didn't know where I was going. I just followed Christ. And I do that to, that, to this day right now. I just follow Jesus. I follow the Holy, Holy Spirit. He leads me and guides me. He tells me what to do, what not to do. And some of you struggle because you won't, you'll say no to God. Go say hi to that sister. I don't like that sister. I didn't even ask you that. That's how the Holy Spirit talks to me. Did I ask you that question? No. Go over there and just say hi to her. Go say hi to that brother. That brother ain't even said hi to him in two months he's been here. He ain't even went up to him not one time to go shake his hand or say thank you. Imagine that. And we're brothers. We say we love God but hate my brother. We love God, but I hate my sister. That's not the way a Christian operates. We got to be walking in forgiveness. We got to be walking in love and kindness. And kindness. Got to be kind. What do I always say? Be nice. Be nice. Be nice. No te va a costar nada. It's free. Just be nice. Can you be nice? All right, we're learning to be nice. Amen. Big zero just went up right now, so praise God. But <laughs> it's all right. Can, can we play that song? It's called Stay. I want you guys, I don't know if the lyrics will come out or nothing like that, just the song itself. Okay, give you a minute. Can I speak for a minute then? All right, I'm still on. Praise the Lord. Amen. But we're in that season right now. It's called Thanksgiving tomorrow. Don't let it finish tomorrow of being thankful and grateful. Let's see if you can maintain this to the next Thanksgiving. Walking in an attitude of gratitude. Of being thankful. When you put gas in your car. Oh my God, gas was five dollars. But you're putting gas in the car. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I, got, I put gas in my car. Amen. Oh, my God, the groceries is out of this uh, you know, world so much. Guess what? You're walking out with some groceries. I, 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 buy, I, I have bought people their groceries. See a lady right there with three kids, and you see their kids. They're all, you know, they're all, you know, the hair's all thrown to the left and right. And she is, too. She's all wore out. You can look at her like, dang. And I just tell the cashier, I said, I'm going to pay for food for her cat. Well, you don't even know how much it is. Don't worry about it. I said, I got it. You know, it comes out to like 80-some bucks. Because, you know, she had was enough for like two. That's two bags worth, you know, like $80. And she says, you don't have to do that. I said, oh, I know that. I want to do this. I want to do this. You know, exactly. And, you know, not even to pay it forward. To be honest with you, that's a good saying and everything. But we don't do it to get paid back. You do it because you're kind. It's going to go forward no matter what, automatically. Automat if, when you do it from your heart, everything comes back to you. you know, it may not come back in groceries, but, you know, all of a sudden somebody lets you have the, 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 ga the parking, lot, uh, parking stall you wanted at the store. You know, they come up at the same time and they're like, go ahead, have it. And that's a big thing for women, right? 
you go out there and want to fight somebody for that, for that stall. Like, hey, I was there first. You know, like, she's kick back, relax. You know, take it easy. I park, I park far away because I don't want my car hit. And they still hit my car. You come out and like, man, how do you hit my car? You're, I'm 40 feet away, 40 parking lots away from me, park, stalls from me, I should say. You know, and you're over here. <clears throat> come out of the movies, me, I, I go to Moder, uh, uh, Madney, Madney, and I park way over there. You know, there's not a lot of people in Madney. It's all senior citizen people, you know, like myself. You know, you go to the, and all of a sudden you, you, you come out and there's two cars right next to you. I'm like, really? What the heck? Why'd you? And then you wake up, I mean, you open the thing like, oh, my God. They put a dent in my car. But I don't know if it's that car, because back in the old days, I was just like, boom, I would just kick the door in. I put a big old dent in it. I, I would, I'm not kidding. That's the type of person I was. Like, you dent in my car, I, was like, I don't even know if it was you, but boom, you're going to pay the price. You know, and I get in the car and I drive away. We're ready? Can't do, okay, no lyrics, but what about the music? Okay. I want you guys to listen to what he, uh, it's uh, like five minutes, it's five minutes, six minutes. You guys give me five, six minutes. But I want you to listen to what he's sing, saying. He's talking about the presence of God. It's beautiful. 